Hello. Today I want to read to you some selections from my favorite music critic and personal hero, Ernest Newman. This is uh, an article called The Confessions of a Musical Critic in an Open Letter to a Younger and More Innocent Member of the Craft. I have received with mixed feelings your letter telling me that you have been appointed musical critic to the Manchingham Gazette. I have the greatest liking and respect for you as a human being, but I doubt whether you possess the proper qualifications for a musical critic, as any artiste, artiste will tell you. A musical critic is not a human being, or if he is, he is one afflicted with a bad form of homicidal mania. <laughs> Are you sure you have the unnatural gifts and the immoral courage to enable you to live up to the ideal of infamy that will be expected of you? On one point, at any rate, you may reassure yourself, the profession of music critic is the easiest in the world. It is perhaps the only profession that can be practiced by the man in the street, with as much assurance as by the man who has given his life to it. It is a well-known fact that while no musical critic who has... <laughs> that while no, no musical critic who ever lived is competent to argue about electricity with the electrician, and so on, uh, not only the electrician, but the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker are all more competent to speak authoritatively on music than the critic. This fact is of itself sufficient to show you how easy it is to be a musical critic, and why it is that the profession attracts merely... <laughs> This fact is of itself sufficient to show you how easy it is to be a musical critic, and why it is that the profession attracts merely the intellectual derelicts of the human race. <laughs> However, once you have realized that you are a mere fool in music compared with the man in the audience who does not know the difference between Schubert and Schumann, who does not know the difference between Schubert and Schumann, or whether the saxophone is played with a bow or a plectrum, the profession has its compensations, and if you don't take it too seriously, you may get a lot of fun out of it. But first of all, let me implore you, Joseph, to adopt an attitude of becoming humility towards those great men and women who condescend to illuminate the world with their compositions, their singing, and their playing. You must surely see for yourself, if you reflect for only a moment, that it takes infinitely more brains to put a few black blobs on ruled paper, or to sing a scale fairly well in tune, or to play a pianoforte piece that millions of people have played before, than it does to run a millinery business in three capitals, or to drive a railway train through a thick fog, or to hold in private one set of political principles and expound in public another. <laughs> Whatever you do, order yourself lowly and reverently towards these great persons in music, the least of whom is plainly your better. Your casual observations your casual observation of them on the platform or the stage may cause you to form erroneous judgments as to the intellectual capacity of some of them. A long experience of singers, for example, may lead you to believe you can formulate a sort of natural law that the higher the voice, the lower the intelligence. <laughs> 